Judith Haraway, Vita Project Director to Alan B, June the 18th, 2017. I made Planetfall this morning. Bultmann seemed pretty eager to be relieved as Project Director. He said a year on Mars is at least 11 months too long for anyone. Good job these one-year contracts don't last for a Martian year, all 687 days of it. Anyway, all's well, Alan B. End report. July the 2nd, 2017. Well, Alan B, it's happened. Breakthrough day. Just took weeks after I arrived, it's actually happened. I was at the mining site an hour ago when news of the discovery came up. And what news? Whatever hopes you had for the Vita project, we've surpassed them. Full information will be transmitted on a security alpha line within the hour. When you receive it, you'll not be able to believe what we've found here on Mars. But believe it, Alan B, believe it. End report. October the 8th, 2017. Operation Akarak proceeding ahead of schedule three months after breakthrough day. The archaeological team has just made planetfall. When they saw the caverns, they couldn't believe their eyes. I've just heard that Earth Control has introduced the death penalty for a whole new set of offenses, including treachery to the company. So your global corporation has gone global all the way taken over the whole show. You've become the unofficial president of Earth, Allenby. Or have I just said the wrong thing? Have I committed verbal treachery to the company? End report. Judith Haraway, Personal Audio Journal, October the 23rd, 2017. It's the first time I've used one of these things, but I can't talk to anyone else, so I'll talk to myself. I put on a hap-hap-happy face for the rest of the staff, although I doubt I've fooled anyone. Mood has been rather cryptic and ominous recently. I suspect she knows more about our discovery than she lets on. She's very reticent about the Thule file. <sighs> all the trouble started the night after breakthrough day. That night, we all dreamed the same dream and awoke with the same word on our lips, Akarak. It's hard to recall that dream. Bewildering shapes, alien music, a snowstorm in an exotic jungle. A sense of colossal loneliness stretching over billions of years. Oh, it's impossible. Can't grasp it. Dreams are the slipperiest of fish. Ever since the start of Operation Akarak, something has invaded the base. It's a subtle invasion. Slow, quiet, and discreet. It's an atmosphere, a presence. There was a time I wasn't afraid of the night. December the 4th, 2017. Operation Akarak proceeding on schedule. Terence Whitaker died yesterday. Cause of death undetermined. Following the new directives, he'll be buried here on Mars. Unrequested shipment of weapons and ammunition received. Just what are we supposed to do with guns on a Martian base? Shoot each other? End report. December the 24th, 2017. It's been a real Christmas Eve night. No Christmas Eve is complete without a ghost story. I was walking down Baker Street when I heard footfalls following. I turned round and there was no one there. It's such a cliche, I feel embarrassed mentioning it even to myself. I mean, what am I saying? That I'm being followed by a ghost? Yes, yes, maybe that is what I'm saying. Martian ghosts. Ghosts from when evolution on Earth had progressed no further than the trilobites. Merry Christmas, Judith. February the 18th, 2018. I went out into the graveyard this morning. The grave of Terence Whitaker had been opened up. The coffin was shattered to pieces. I didn't see Whitaker's corpse, but there were the prints of bare feet in the soil. Request immediate and total evacuation of Vita Base. Fancy a holiday on Mars, Allenby? End report. It's February the 19th, 2018. We're still searching for Terence Whitaker's body. 
at least by going through the motions, it didn't take long to establish that the soil on the grave had been pushed aside from below. And those bare footprints circling the base, then veering off towards Olympus Mons. I try not to think about it. Poltergeist activity continuing. March the 12th, 2017. I wish to put on record my strong objection to the projected opening of the sarcophagus. Repeat request for total evacuation of Vita base. Shall not report further unless request granted. End report. It's March the 17th, 2018. Outside, the air temperature is minus 45 degrees Celsius and falling. Nadja mentioned that some terrestrial organisms can only exist below freezing point. I keep thinking about that. I dreamt about my son last night. I dreamt he was still alive, but blue with winter and calling to me from the surface of red, cold Mars. I can still feel that alien presence emanating from down there in the necropolis. Time and memories resonating in the stone the tick of the clock in the rock, the final countdown. June the 21st, 2018. I once blamed Martin for our son's death. I wish to God I hadn't. Martin got involved in dangerous business for Allenby and our son got caught in the crossfire. Bad things happen, usually to the wrong people. Martin said, he wants to come to Mars and hold me in his arms. <laughs> Keep your feet on the earth, Martin. A few months on Mars and already I'm fully acclimatized. I'm fitting in here just dandy. They put me in Arkham Dorm. The place names and Carter signs around here are a bit of a Vita-based joke, but it feels sort of weird in there. I always dreamt in color until I slept in Arkham Dorm. Now all my dreams are in black and white. Mr. Ober, He's a cheap supervisor, one of the big three around here, along with Felici and Haraway. He gave up his quarters to Mei Lin and moved into Arkham with his lower grades. I guess the idea was to boost morale in the dorm. He's a great guy, Mr. Ober. In fact, I gave him one of the abstract paintings I composed yesterday. I did two paintings, each an exact duplicate of the other. It's a sort of common and human duality and, you know, deep stuff like that. They started me off on dark maintenance. My job may not sound much, but it's important, and it'll lead to bigger things. I'm young, I'm going for it, and I've made a good start. I just know I'm going to have a great time here on Mars. Jean Mero, Daylog, August 8th, 2018, 6.37 a.m. The last batch of recruits to our merry band has just made Planet Fall. Two exo-geologists, a bacteriologist, and a mining engineer. That brings Vita Base up to its full complement of 58 members. We're right on schedule for the Vita project. Haraway gave the newcomers the usual pep talk. They listened with happy shining faces, just like I did three months ago. They weren't told about the big secret we unearthed down below. When they do hear about it, and when they see it, they'll be looking over their shoulders come nightfall like the rest of us. Sometimes I think Mood is the only one who has a clue what's going on. Deborah Trask, Daylog, Biolab, August 8, 2018, 7.30 a.m. Research into vaccine for worst case scenario in progress. File Aries Contagion, Password Triune. Microfossil bacteria remain semi-active. Some resemblance to terrestrial cyanobacteria, size ranging from 1 to 100 microns, depending on oxygenation and exposure to UV. On Earth, these microbes would enlarge and multiply at a prodigious rate. They'd cover the planet in months. Further tests still show slight reaction to acid immersion, but the effect is temporary. Exploration of their survival over an estimated 4 billion years may lie in the peculiar tripartite configuration, involving forms approximating bacillus, coccus, and spirillum, combined in single semi-crystalline structures. The rocks still move as if there is psychic wind in the corridors and chambers. And they sing to me. Something tells me they're singing my requiem. Most of the crew will be going down to the necropolis soon. 
I'm staying right here. Yuri Andreevich, Biochemical Division, Daylog, August 8, 2018, 9.45 a.m. I believe that today is the last day of my life. It all started with Operation Akarak. Akarak, what sort of name is that? But we had it first in our dreams a year ago. An operation named after a voice in a dream. It abused Earth control, but it's different here on cold, silent Mars. Some dreams are bad. Some bad dreams come true. It's no good appealing to Earth. The whole planet is under the thumb of global corporations, hand in hand with the military. And behind them all, Earth control. They don't care about people, only profit. But what can I do? I have the security clearance to access the explosives. Well, I've prepared something. A little cocktail. Just enough to blow an airlock, maybe. With no damage to my fellow base members. Just enough, perhaps, to delay the project for a while. Andrew Muir, Chief Information Operator. Daylog, August 8th, 2018, 10.17 a.m. I wanted to go down below with the rest on the big day, but someone has to look after the information systems. So here I am, kicking my heels about the base. Takami's been a pain in the ass, still refusing me one of those guns that Earth Control shipped in. People are getting pretty twitchy around here. Things are quiet at the moment. About a dozen personnel remain at ground level. I'll stick with mood. That computer has more personality than anyone on the base. Over keeps hassling me about the common escape systems being unreliable in the event of major biohazard. Well, I've done my best with the hardware I've got in this godforsaken planet, okay? And I've rigged a special setup for Airlock 2. That's a neat little piece of electronic artwork, if you ask me. If you want miracles, send for Kenjo Yuji. I'm just an ordinary genius, right? And what's so bad about my little arrangement, huh? Couldn't be simpler. Use a scarab on the door, then speak its name. Simon Fellner, Biolab Operative. Daylock, August 8th, 2018, 9.43 p.m. Haraway's left me in charge of the Kremlin while most of the crew were down in the Necropolis on the final phase of Operation Akarak. I'm sitting here in solitary splendor, talking to myself. I'm not complaining. Those subterranean chambers give me the spooks. That's bloody freezing. Just a moment. Updated emergency hatch code coming in. 0756. Jonathan Darnley. Biolab supervisor for my sins, which are many and mortal, in this Martian establishment in this year of our law, 2018. It's uh, August the 8th. Your cyber lab informed, keeping abreast of the Earth calendar with the outlandish 687 day Martian year is exceedingly tiresome. Uh, whatever, it's um, quarter to ten in the evening. Not that you can tell, night from day in this blasted cavern. It was I who dubbed it this Cyclopean chamber. Cyclopean ruins, bewildering, alien architecture and all that. It's all too Lovecraftian. I very different from my own home in Chiswick. The arena site is very quiet at the moment. Everyone's at the far end in the regal tomb. Crane's all set up. Standing here in the Cyclopean chamber, looking at the alien architecture raised before life crawled out of Earth's oceans, I get a feeling of terrible immensity. Jean Merrow, Daylog, August 8th, 2018, 11.03 p.m. I've just finished a double shift down below. We're all getting pretty nervous. No one likes what's going on, but no one says anything. Three months more and I'll be out of here. Roll on that day. I don't sleep at nights. Matthew Tierney, Daylog, August 8th, 2018, 11.33 p.m. While I'm registering the local Deacon Town 3 override, 2734. Hmm. <gasps> as well make a few observations. Deacon Tam 3. The Vita project has really messed up. Haraway and Felicia are well aware of it. There's nothing much they can do. Haraway was here in the Arboretum an hour ago, 
Asking me if I wanted to be there when they opened the thing up. No way. I came here with such high hopes. This arboretum was supposed to be the first step in the terraforming of Mars. But no one gives a damn about that anymore. Oh, what the hell. Maybe it's just me. I've been hearing things over the last year. The floor in here has become strange. At one third of Earth's gravity, morphological change was expected. But what's happening is more than that. Last night I thought the leaves whispered to me. I keep thinking what lies underneath the soil. I didn't used to believe in ghosts. I do now. Deborah Trask, Daylog, Biolab, August 8, 2018. 11.42 p.m. Something's wrong in the necropolis. The paraway shouted on the intercom, telling us not to go down there. As if I needed telling. A quarter to midnight. I looked into the microscope. I looked at the bacteria. And the bacteria looked back. Jonathan Darnley, Biolab Supervisor. A quarter to midnight. I'll not survive to hear midnight's chimes. A bad dream has come true. For anyone who may find this recording, I proffer a single suggestion. What gave birth to rod, spiral, and oval can be turned against rod, spiral, and oval. As for the rest, silence. It's Haraway. Listen, Alan. It's too late to evacuate. I don't know if you're receiving this. Communications are breaking up. They opened up that duck on your orders. It was a Pandora's box. All the eagles of old Mars flew out, but Pandora found a solitary gift in the box. Hope. I doubt there's any hope on cold Mars. There are, there are people clumping together. Time in the rock. You should designate Mars a quarantine planet, but I know you won't. You if you send a manned craft, warn the crew. Stay alone. Stay alive. And for God... Luke Barton. Daylog, etc., etc. Susan is dead. Ripped apart. Oh. Before communications failed, I got through to Nadja and Ashira. They're on their way. If they make it here safe, we'll get a chance to escape. We'll need at least two of us to launch the craft. By the look of it, we'll have to use the manual override to open the bay, so long as Mood opens the override hatch. That means only two of us can escape. I wonder how we'll choose. Toss a coin. I can hear the rumble of bulkheads sealing all over the base. Ah, oh, sure, I just made it here in time. I think I can hear Dodger coming in. And something else is coming. Oh, God. Nadja Karinsky, geologist. Daylog, August 8th, 2018. 11.54 p.m. I just arrived in the shuttle bay. The biohazard alarm is shrieking all over the bay. Luke and Ishara and Susan got here before me, but something got to them first. It made a terrible mess of them. The door has locked behind me. I can't get out, and no one can get in. As the shuttle requires a minimum two-person crew, that means I'm stuck here unless someone makes it through the ducts. Now I think of it, the ducts will be closed in response to biohazard. All things considered, I'd sooner be in Minsk. Communication still not responding. Yori was the last to transmit a message. Stay alone. Stay alive. He must have been thinking of airborne infection from the necropolis. For the official record, I wish to add this observation. 
Vita base is haunted. I can hear some movement in the duct. I hope it's you, man. Antonio Felici, base director, day log, August 8th, 2018. 11.56 p.m. I was walking down Broadway when I first heard them coming. There's a dead man hovering in front of me. I just walk on by. I can still hear gunfire. Earth Control should never have shipped those weapons in. If anyone gets to hear this, tell Alan B. I resigned. I handed the master key over to Judith. The crew trust her more than me. They think I'm in Allenby's pocket. Well, I guess I used to be. Yuri broadcast a message a few moments before system closed down. He said, stay alone, stay alive. Sure, but stay alive how long? An hour at most? The end will come soon. Main bulkheads are sealed. Shuttle Bay Area obstructed. No way out. I'm heading back to my own room. Lock myself in. Sooner or later they'll come for me, and that'll be the finish. If anyone hears this, tell my wife I kept the faith. She'll know what that means. Some things are personal. Simon Fellner, Biolab Operative. Day log, August 8th, 2018. 11.57 p.m. Haraway came in for the flare bolts a while ago. But she only took a couple of them. She couldn't find the flare gun. She told me to stay put. I am not arguing. The alarm's been going the last 10 minutes. Red alert quarantine condition. Bulkhead sealed. There have been screams that turned my blood to red ice. And the other sounds. Louder. Unhuman. The sounds are getting closer. But the Kremlin door will give out a charging mammoth. I'm safe in here. I'm safe. God in heaven. They're coming through the walls. Mei Lin, my new supervisor, they look. Uh, to hell with all that. You're right, Angel. We should have disobeyed orders. Now we are dead for sure. Or worse. It was 11.45 when they opened the regal tomb. And I saw what happened next. People running. People screaming. People changing. I remember you warning about contagion, so I stayed clear of Biolab. Something tells me I've been infected and that I don't want to pass it on to you. I make straight for your lab if it's empty. If the vector's working, I have get this message through to you. Your lab's deserted. No sign of any trouble here. Quarantine procedures seem to be in operation. Oh hell, I should have locked the money side door with my talk. Just didn't think of it in all the panic. I go and look for it. Your love's been breached. Something's holding through the vent. Something big. It's well in front of my faces, and they all looking at me. I can't get out. I'll send this message through with the tech right now. Run like hell to the mining site and lock the door, would you? Hope you and John survive all this. Good luck, Angel. August the 8th, 2018. We're opening the sarcophagus today. Nobody's celebrating. Some of the guns are missing from the storerooms. I knew that shipment of weapons would cause trouble. In the washroom a few minutes ago, I looked in the mirror and saw a figure standing behind me. The reflection at my back was the image of myself, Judith, standing behind Judith. She held out her arms and said, be with us. When I turned round, she was gone. The strange thing is, I took it all in my stride. It's a few minutes past midnight. We shifted the lid of the sarcophagus and all the old evils of Mars stormed out of that stone tomb. Pandora's box is open and there's no hope, or none that I can see. I watched people clumping together, three in one, threefold beings, abominations. They tore into the rest of us, 
utter carnage. Some of the crew went mad, firing wildly. The bullets didn't stop the creatures, but they did a lot of damage to human beings. I've always hated guns. An hour's gone by now, and I'm still sitting here in my quarters, staring at the door. The base has gone very quiet. Maybe those creatures have become dormant. It seems as though I'm the only one left alive. Of course, there's the knocking on the door and the voice asking for admittance. That's not the voice of a living man. Time passes. The dead are still knocking on the door, calling my name. I won't listen to them. I keep hearing only one voice, seeing one face. Yours, Martin. If you ever hear this, and I have a feeling you will, I just want to say that it wasn't your fault he died. I should never have walked out on you. Martin, I miss you. And as for that blue planet you walk on that is so, so precious to me right now, help keep it safe, Martin. There's a threat coming to Earth from its own cold regions. A threat codenamed Thule. Something's just come in. The door's securely locked, but I'd forgotten about the duct panel. I always wondered whether I'd face death with courage. Now I'm about to find out. All that's left to say is goodbye. Judith Haraway, signing off. This is the last testament of Dieter Mintz, born July the 2nd, 1991, in Heidelberg. About to die, August the 8th, 2018, on Mars. If you kill yourself to escape damnation, isn't that justified? I think so. I hope so. I won't let them get to me. I won't let them turn me into one of them. <laughs> They're battering at the door. No escape that way. The only way out is the rope hanging from the ceiling. I've made my peace with God. If anyone should hear this, I pray that you're not hearing it in this terrible place. If you are, pray, pray hard. Something very, very old has returned. It's a disease, and it thinks. God be with you. <laughs>